Hello all, we're live, it's Friday, and uh, I'm working on my friend Danny Rabin's pedal board. Let me get this centered. And uh, we're gonna do some pedal board layout tips today, since we're kind of starting fresh with this rig, and uh, showing you the process of how things get laid out. We've done a few videos on this, but nothing in real time. So we'll kind of use this as an opportunity to show some real time uh, assembly and how we do it and what my approach is and some of the materials and we'll go from there. And if you have questions, of course, you can put those in the, uh, in the chat and I will try to take periodic breaks so that we are able to, uh, to get to those. So I'm gonna move it back down to the uh, pedal board view. Get it straightened out. Cool. So the first thing is, is that actually Danny's right-footed. So we're going to have to change the riser position, which is really easy because we leave a bunch of extra holes here so that you're able to orient this in any, any way that you want, whether you're left-footed or right-footed. These are just uh, actually rack screws that we use for all the uh, the fasteners here. 1032nd is the standard for rack screws. In the middle leg here, we actually don't even need. On most of our pedal boards, the middle leg is kind of optional. So we don't even actually need that. And you can see here that we have all these different holes here so that you can literally have a few different alignment options based on where you want to be, what type of riser you have, so that anything on this surface is a universal fit with our risers. Because Danny is right footed, we want to keep the volume pedal on this side. So I'll reattach it where it's supposed to be. That's the beauty of these risers. You can really put them anywhere you want. They're all interchangeable. That makes it really handy. If you uh, have a pedal board surface and you want to change the riser, there's no consequence to that. You can just buy the riser and uh, it'll fit right in. So we have all these holes here to uh, accommodate multiple different locations. take off the front screws too so we can flip up. It's a little tight on the back so I'm going to loosen that up too. this up and this can adjust kind of the tension of the bridge for now I'm going to keep it pretty loose because we're going to be going back and forth so I don't need it to have much resistance just want it to be easy power supply will go right under there and uh, we'll also throw a little buffer interface there in the corner I'll just kind of throw this guy here temporarily since I know that this uh, 1590 box is going to be what I'll use ultimately for all the input outputs. And this is going to be for a uh, effects loop 
or in front of the amp so it could go four cable method or just standard mono two cable method. So we got that. We'll have our volume pedal here. I'm gonna put the tuner going sideways. The main reason why we can get away with this is that there's not gonna be any jacks in the middle of the, of the volume pedal, the input and output are split on the outside. And we're not gonna have any uh, cable going into the input here. Uh, it's only gonna have, or sorry, the output here, there's only gonna be the input side. So with low profile plugs, this will just make it. Um, so that's kind of a, a cool thing about using these two in tandem. We're going to have Wampler, Ego Compressor, Steel String, Ultraphonics. That's going to be kind of the, the bottom row. And I actually I might even be able to fit, because these are all top jacks. We might actually be able to even make that work, since we just have the input side going. That actually might be a better move for us. I think I like that better. Tell me in the chat, what do you like better? This is still plenty of space because we all have top jacks here. This is going to be where it's a little tighter. Got our two reverbs. These are all in the effects loop. And uh, the Nova delay. This Nova delay had the MIDI mod done to it, although there's no MIDI happening. We might figure out a workaround to this. <laughs> Let's see, so we got those guys there. I think that that might be the move. Now, the next thing I do before I even start putting down any Velcro is I like to uh, put jacks and everything, especially the stuff that has side jacks, so that we can accommodate for spacing here. So I'll do that real quick. And just throw in the type of uh, jacks I'll be using so we know what our limitations are space-wise. This is something that those pedal board planners don't allow for. They don't really tell you about how much space jacks are going to accommodate. I'll just put them back here anyway, even though this isn't gonna matter much for what we're doing. This is all mono, so don't need to use those stereo inputs. And this is hanging off a little bit. Um, in Danny's case that uh, we're gonna use on this guy, can actually be a carry-on. So it's actually slightly bigger than what we have here. So if it hangs off slightly on the jacks, it's not the end of the world. I just wanna make sure he has plenty of clearance on the volume pedal here, because I don't want him to have anything hitting the Nova delay. But that's, that should be pretty, pretty standard. That's gonna go there. That's plenty of room. I'm gonna kind of cheat these this way, just knowing that the heel of the volume pedal, we wouldn't want it to hit this guy, even though this is just gonna be running all the time out of a tuner out off the uh, input buffer, just a, a parallel output. So I think that that actually looks pretty good. That looks like a good solution. The other thing that Danny had mentioned too is that we could swap these for Polaris, which are a very similar reverb made by Digitech. That could go here in its place. It would cut down our are spacing a little bit, um, but not significantly. But because this case is bigger, this is gonna be plenty stable, even hanging over a little bit on each side. It's not too big of a deal. And this is definitely has plenty of clearance to make it. Um, so let's take some questions. It's a little hot out here, so I'll have my, uh, my water. Let's see what we got. All right, Kristen Jones, about to start another board right on time. Hacienda Musica, cheers from Texas. <laughs> Is it even a vertex video? We don't see Uncle Hayes and Lourdes. I know it looks so glorious. I just I was just playing uh, tennis. Everybody who's a 4.0, 4.5 USTA tennis player, I'll definitely hit with you. Um, never love sideways tuners, tougher to read, hanging off the board makes me nervous. Well, it, even if it were up here, it wouldn't be hanging off the board. It would, it would just be clearing. There's no, there's no jack. It's going back to this. It's flush with the board at the edge, because again, if you're using a tuner out, you only need the input jack occupied. 
You don't need the input and the output occupied, so it wouldn't be hanging off the board. And that's from uh, Aaron. Uh, love the Nova de delay. It's still it's still one of my favorite delays. I got one. Uh, no, the Bradford board isn't done. I'm waiting on some materials to come in so we can get that finished up, but it's very close. Um, Alan. You're welcome. Um, do you have a video explaining combining axe effects or similar with standalone pedals? An axe effects like rack unit or the pedal uh, pedal based version of the pedal board? You drink it out of a out of a vase? Uh, no, it's just like a a weck jar. Um, but uh, I drink a lot of water, so it's just easier for me just to go just to go straight for it. Um, is there a space next to the power supply box? There's no space next to the, the there's a little tiny space uh, next to it. Let me open it up again so you can see it. I'm just gonna take off that top row since we're not fastened down. Okay. So you got your one spot true tone power supply and then I put a little Hammond 1590 box. This is gonna be what I'm gonna put the buffer interface in and this is just gonna be kind of a four cable method um, style box that I'll make where it can go all pedals in front of the amp if he plugs in two cables and then effects loop for cable method if he has an amp with an effects loop so it can go either way. So this is kind of like uh, Danny's uh, kind of you know small rig that he can take to smaller gigs and stuff like that. So and this is Danny Rabin from Marvin. If you don't know Marvin they're incredible. Go check them out. Um, SD design, what's up? Um, Fender 5150 at a Boss GT1. Should never buy another one. The display went out. Uh, so this is a good video. I'm considering buying separate pedals now. And yes, there's space next to the power supply box and the Nova delay be powered by one spot. Yes, it can. Um, it's 12 volts, but uh, you can, the way that this the one spot works is basically so long as you don't exceed the total current output of the entire uh, supply you can pretty much use any output even if it's rated for a lower current it's not like the linear supplies of old um, and Alan Long in terms of the rack unit yeah so I use uh, uh, XFX2 all the time in my rack and uh, I'll use pedals um, going into the front of the amp and then I take a line out and then I hit the XFX with that and then that does like all the reverb and delay processing that the dry effects don't do that's how I do it and then SS, um, uh, he must mean Mason, there's no mic, uh, but <laughs> well, I'll go by mic for now. Uh, what is the DIY cable to be used for patch cables? I typically use Mogami 2314 or 2319. Uh, yeah, hit the like button, it helps the video. Uh, yeah, if you got a like button, hit it. Let's go back to the board a little bit now. Um, all right, so we decided that it's going to go down here. That's how it's going to look. Got plenty of room. And in terms of sequencing, I think the order is going to go, you know, underneath, start with the buffer, input buffer, grab that first. Then it's going to have a split out, a tuner out. One of that side is going to go to this poly tune, so it's going to stay on all the time. Then the main output is going to go to the Ego Compressor, Ultraphonics, Steel String. Then that's going to go back to the interface, or actually, my apologies, steel string, Dunlop, volume pedal. Then that's going to go out to the interface in front of the amp. Then it's going to go effect send coming in from the effects loop. It's going to go Nova Delay, Reverb 1, Reverb 2 in terms of the sequencing. So there's two different reverbs because Danny needs to be able to have two different reverbs. And so that's the, that's the way that's going to go. And then for the last reverb, it's going to go back into the interface box going out. And then I'll do some... Uh, some changes to the the switching jacks inside here so they can switch between uh, Serial in front of an amp or effects loop and they'll have an input buffer an output buffer and a buffer on the return So there'll be three total buffers in that box, but but four holes per side. So I think that that's how That's how we're gonna do it. So we've got our layout determined and this is great because it's a small rig So there's not there's not too much to to think about the next thing I like to do before I start putting velcro down is I like to kind of trace out the spacing. So I kind of 
put them roughly where I want them, you know, as close to exact as possible to where I want them to be spatially on the pedal board. That looks about right, making sure that they're all lined up nicely. And then I'll take like a mechanical pencil as a really kind of fine tip. And then I'll, uh, I'll trace them out. And this just helps me know where the Velcro is going to need to go once we get it in there. So I got those all labeled out. You can kind of see a little bit of pencil tracings. And I'll just put steel string here, ultra, comp, tuner. VP. So I know what everything is. It's pretty self-explanatory that VP probably wouldn't be confused for anything else. Do the power supply. Do the, the buffer. And we'll go to the top row. And I'm just tracing all this stuff out so again I so I know exactly where it needs to go, where the Velcro needs to go. I've sort of pre-planned my spacing here. This stuff can like just wipe off with your hand, so it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty benign on the pedal board. Power supply, and this will be the interface. So I kind of have my layout here. I've got it all written out in pencil, so I know where everything's going to go. I know the spacing, how it is in relationship with all the other pedals. That's kind of the next step that I take in terms of how I'm laying stuff out. But we'll break again if there are any questions. I'll go to the next step and drink out of my my vase. I have to say the clear glass bottles are very unbecoming on uh, live streams. You see like the whole <laughs> mouth going. I'll do my best to reframe. Um, let's see. Ricky, hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you, Ricky? Is there a good way to determine the length of your DIY patch cables? How do you measure them from pedal to pedal? Okay, this is a good question. So, let's pretend that we got some pedals going on here. Let's just pretend from the purposes of, I don't know. Um, let's pretend that we're gonna go between steel string and ultraphonics, right? We go between steel string and ultraphonics. So, um, let's see if I have a good example. All right. This is good because only one side of this is terminated. So typically what I would do, I might not use a straight connector here necessarily, but this will, this will give you enough information, I think. So I solder one side only, and then I leave the other side blunt like this, just cut nothing on it. I put the side that's already soldered in one of the jacks, and then, I would take the same plug that I'm gonna be using on the reciprocal side and I would remove the housing from it. 
and I would put it in, and then I would actually measure how long the cable needed to be to fit exactly into that space. And if it was a longer run, I would actually dress it in place with the zip ties and tie down mounts and then do the exact same thing. And so I say, okay, this is about the, the bend that I need on the cable. This is about the amount of slack that I want. Okay, that's right. So I'm gonna cut it right where I think it should be. And then I'm going to kind of try to fit it into the, the jack again. And kind of visualize, okay, do I have enough here? To make this work, is this about the right amount of space? Did I cut it long enough? Is it too short? And then once I determine it's the right size, then I can solder it right there in place. And so basically I'm making one side, measuring it into the second side, cutting it at that side, taking the housing off, whether this is a straight or a right angle. And so I have exactly the length of cable that I need, no more, no less. That's usually the cleanest way to do it. That's typically what I do, where I make a bunch of half cables and then I solder them into the opposite or the, the, the subsequent pedal just so it's able to fit exactly in there. There's no extra cable needed, unless I want extra cable. Um, so that's that's typically the approach that I take. Hey, Sean Johnson. Yeah, thanks, JE1279. Appreciate it. It's a hot one out here. It's funny, we had a torrential downpours. I don't know if people saw in the news in, in Northern California, there was like flooding everywhere. And now it's like, you know, kind of humid almost in like in the 80s. So your luck can change that quick in California. Dang, it's hot. I'm feeling it. All right, let's go to the next step. If you have more questions, put those in the comments. All right, so next step is all about the power grip. Now, in the old days, I would use dual lock, but I actually like this better because in dual lock, I had to use two different densities to get the best stick. Whereas this, I just have to use one, and the adhesive is actually better, cleaner for this type of surface. And when I pull it up, I don't have to like Brazilian wax the thing to get off all the old adhesive. So I really like it for that reason. So some of these have dual lock on them, and the great thing is is that this is compatible with dual lock, so it's not like you have to, you know, get new Velcro. <laughs> so that's a plus. But the first thing I like to do is just tone brush everything off because you don't want any dust or anything like that to affect the, the stick of the Velcro. And the first thing I'll do is just make sure that we have Velcro going across now. I probably actually don't even need to use this much Velcro to go across. It, I could actually probably just do four corners, but uh, I'm just gonna do it for continuity purposes. By the way, these are the best scissors for cutting Velcro you'll ever find. It's like a serrated tooth, and uh, these things, it just goes through Velcro like butter. If anybody's done a lot of cutting of uh, dual lock or even just adhesive stuff, the scissors can get so gummy so fast that they become almost unusable. Uh, the serrated edge scissors, these things are incredible, unreal, best scissors for Velcro. All right, we got those. Ego compressor, I'll go straight across on this as well. One trick that I like to use too is I don't go all the way to the edge. And the main reason why I don't do that is that you'll see kind of the Velcro peeking out from the bottom if you go all the way to the edge. And I don't set it over the screws either because if you ever want to remove the bottom, you'll have a problem where you won't be able to get to the pedal so easily. So uh, I usually inset it, you know, maybe a quarter or half an inch in on the sides from each pedal. And I don't go all the way to the edge either. This is going to be plenty. And to see, this guy's already got it, so we don't need to worry about him. Here's a fun one. Here's a fun one. I'm gonna move these up temporarily. Let's have a better view. So these are a real pain in the butt because this is rubberized. This bottom doesn't hold a stick very well. So this is the trick that you're gonna do on a Dunlop volume pedal or anything that resembles this. Even a Boss volume pedal, you can do this trick too. So we're gonna take off the bottom. 
Now, if you rip this off, it's gonna be a real mess, a real nightmare, it doesn't work so well. So all you're gonna do is just turn this over and you have a beautiful mounting surface right there. It's that easy. Some people will hard mount these to the board, and I think if you have a high quality, uh, like a power grip or a dual lock, I don't recommend doing that because it can often create sort of a, uh, it'll move the pedal board around too much if it's hard mounted to the board. I've also seen instances where it kind of, uh, you'll have to replace the, the threads of the screws because there's so much weight on it. So I usually stay away from that. I usually just make sure that it's, Got enough dual lock and honestly doing one strip on the top and one strip on the bottom is going to be more than enough for this especially for these kind of like abbreviated size volume pedals that's going to be more than enough let's see this is already got we got some on there We'll just open this guy up even though it's not built yet. Put the screws in. So the next thing I'll do, same thing here, don't go all the way to the edge. Don't cover the screws because you need to be able to have access to them. These scissors make actually really easy work out of this. I'm going to cut a little, not quite enough off. Perfect. All right, we got all that in order. Go to the top shelf. Let's pause for a second for some questions. Whew, it's hot out there. Let's see what we got. Hey, Vince, Metal Mike. What's up, guys? I'm glad, Ricky. Hope that helps. Sporting the purple laces. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, I got, uh, I didn't even know that you could see the, the shoes. Got some purple laces, oh yeah. Yep, purple laces. Those are my tennis shoes. All right, do you prefer metal boards over wood? Um, well, they're lighter, that's for sure. Um, wood is more customizable easier to customize because you can just cut the wood whatever size you want and laminate it with abs or formica or whatever i'm 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 happy to use both i just use the metal because that's that's what we make but i i would have no issue with using wood uh if the laminate's good better than dreary what cool weather we're having in eastern virginia eastern virginia all right well i'm glad that yeah, it's not too too wet it's usually pretty good here not too bad the wet jar reminds me of a small wine carafe. I guess it could be. It could be a wine carafe. But uh, for now, it's just uh, water and some lemon. Man, it's hot. Uh, let's see. Are the, are the new boards available to buy yet? Looks great in the video. Um, the Mark II boards will, will uh, I'm told, will ship on the first of the month. So that's Monday. That's Monday. So yes. Any tips for mounting a crybaby? I would really do, uh, Tyler, the same technique that we're doing here. 
and make sure that, you know, you're using obviously the side. Let's see if I got one here. This isn't a crybaby, but it, it might as well be the same thing. It's a Buddha wa. So I just have one here and one here. It's a little heavier, so you may want to put a third one across here to make sure that it really stays. But uh, generally, that's, a, that's enough to make these guys. I forgot how heavy duty these Buddhas are. They're really hardcore. So that, that's how I would do it on a, on a wall. Um, let's see. Geo, PVC6 on the way. Congrats. Is that the, is that a mini Dunlop? No, this is the, I guess it's a mini, but it's a, you know, the guy that I first saw this with was Bradford Mitchell. This is a volume X8. So it's actually kind of like somewhere between the full size and the mini. So like, here's a wah, and then here's, let me back up. Here's a wah, and then here's the volume pedal. So this is eight, I think this is 11. Um, so it's kind of somewhere in between. So it's not like one of those things where you have to, institute some foot binding in order to make it work or have like a peg leg. I know some people are into that, but um, it's a, uh, this is kind of like a good middle ground where it doesn't feel like a toy. It feels like you're, you're able to uh, really get everything nicely on there. It's a good kind of uh, middle ground. Um, yeah, I, I'd say go for it, go for this one. Um, Uh, size 16, yeah, 16 might be tough. You might have to go with just the regular Volume X or an FE 500. Uh, any word on the buffers? No word on the buffers. They're 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 done. They're being made. Uh, it's just it's been the some of the part supply issues have been challenging, just in terms of not in terms of getting them, but just getting them here so that they can be built. Nick Osborne in the UK couldn't get Mogami 2314 for SP 400. Got Evans Audio Monorail. I think it's fine. I think if your buffering's good, honestly, it doesn't really matter what the cable is. Um, I think in the evidence cable's fine. I think you just solder it. Are the True Tone buffers any good? They actually are very good. For the money, I think they're the best out there. Uh, M. Jeffrey, my board is outgrowing my Pedal Power 2. Thoughts on a replacement? Pedal Power 3 is great. You can expand those to the X8 or the X4 so you can get more outputs out of it, just like a, a Strymon Ohi um, paired with a Zuma. And where are vertex effects made? Everything is in Van Nuys, so down in, in uh, LA County. And some of the, I'd say most of our parts, and I think this is, this is the same with every manufacturer out there, most of our parts are coming from China, Taiwan, Malaysia. That's from foot switches to passive components to jacks. Pretty much impossible. So nobody can really technically say made in USA because if you're made in USA, that means all of the means, the modes, uh, materials for production all exist within the United States. And so really nobody can say that um, because there's just you, there's just things you can't have made here. I don't think there's any company that makes pots in the USA anymore. I don't think there's any company that's making three pull double throw foot switches in the United States. Um, the best you can do is have it assembled here. Um, you can potentially get your metal here, like all of our pedal boards, all the guys that make our pedal boards, the same guys that make our enclosures for all of our, our pedals, like... Uh, Here's a, here's a Vertex Boost. As you can see, this doesn't resemble any other company's enclosure because they're custom made for us from the company that makes all of our metal stuff. So this is like a, this is kind of the, the only way you can do that is, is get them custom made. And uh, so stuff that we can't have done here, we have done here. And uh, stuff that is impossible to get here, like pots or foot switches or jacks, you know, we're just like everybody else. We're going to have to get them um, from an overseas supplier because those are the only people that make them. And then uh, we do all the QC assembly in Van Nuys, um, and that's how it goes. So we can't say made in America. We can say assembled in America or assembled in California. And there's a lot of people that are not following the rules on that, but uh, I don't know. I don't think anybody's really enforcing the pedal world, but uh, I'm just trying to keep it above board where I can. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and, and Gia says, my parts are anchored in the channel between Long Beach and Catalina. Yeah, it's, it's true. I know that we have um, we have some parts right now that are stuck there. I think jacks and foot switches. We, we, we usually try to be preemptive and order a lot of the common parts because obviously every single one of our pedals uses the same jacks, uses the same foot switch. So stuff that's like 
you know, across the board. We use, we usually buy kind of reserve stock. So if we run into problems on long lead times, we always have kind of the recurring parts available. And if we have to buy from a, a, a local, they'd be the same parts. So it's a domestic supplier, but it's still from the same source. We can still do that and aren't totally screwed. Um, and I think more people are probably gonna have to get creative around that as the supply chain issues continue. Um, so people just need to be patient. Hard wires are awesome. The DL8, delay looper, the, the tape setting. Yeah, these are, these are probably the best reverbs I'd say made in the last 10 years. Like this reverb is like having as close as you can get to a Lexicon reverb or the Polara. Excellent reverbs, I highly recommend them. And if you wanna know how to make them 100% wet, I got a cool mod for that too. I just bought three buffers for my pedal board, as you said, and they sounded much better. Awesome, DJ Morales. What's the most in, what's the most inventive you've gotten making a patch bay? I mean, in the old days, I used to kind of do everything, and so we would get some really bizarre stuff. I think one time there was like, I don't know, I think one time I made one that had like 16 uh, IOs per side or something like that. And it had all these different uh, insert loops and effects loop in stereo or mono. Um, it was pretty pretty intense. Um, there's if you type in like vertex interface boxes, you'll see some crazy like ABY boxes, um, all sorts of uh, all sorts of crazy stuff. I made one for a for a vocalist once that was like XLR and converted balanced to unbalanced for unbalanced pedals, and then converted back to balance and had transformers in it. That one was pretty interesting. How do you ship patch cables when you sell them from your store on Reverb? I think generally they ship through the post office, Jesse, I'm pretty sure. USPS, I think. Priority mail. I'm glad, Arthur, that you dig it. Sean Johnson tried to solder my own patch cables, but the tin keeps beating up and rolling off. So a couple things could be happening. Could be that it's not hot enough, or maybe it's too hot. Usually I'm keeping it right around maybe 750 degrees or so. Um, you could also use some flux, that might help. Um, sometimes also, if it's depending on your connector, sometimes if you rough it up with a little sandpaper where the connection is, it can help kind of give you a little bit more grab. Um, so that's another way that you could approach it. And using high quality 6040 leaded solder, important. Um, which Velcro have you gone to now? So we're using all the power grip, which is this, and we actually get this uh, directly from Godlike, and it's great. We sell it through our store. I prefer it to the 3M Dual Lock. 3M Dual Lock's still great if you have it, but uh, if you can, I'd say that this is better. We sell it on the Rig Doctor store. And also I should mention, on the Rig Doctor right now, um, over on the site, we're doing a giveaway. You can find out about it on our social media too. Um, we are doing a giveaway of a free pedal board. So you can enter there over on the, the Rig Doctor website. I think all the entry details are on the Rig Doctor Instagram and on the Vertex Effects Instagram. And so you can go there and you can enter to win a pedal board. I think you get to pick your size. So whatever size pedal board you want, that gets shipped to you free and that's available anywhere in the world. We'll ship it to you. It doesn't have to just be US, so that's a cool thing if you're interested in getting a free pedal board. Mark, I feel your pain getting components. I work for a ventilation company and we're in the same boat. Stay frosty in the heat, yeah. Well, inside we have, we have air conditioning, but out here in the garage we do not have air conditioning, so it's a little hotter. Uh, how would you mount a Line 6 HDFX? Uh, rubber feet are too high. Any best practices? HDFX. I'm trying to think. I guess that's just the big multi-effects unit. Um, what would I do there? Well, you could probably remove the rubber feet is probably the first thing you do. Or if you can't remove the rubber feet and it has screws, what I would do is actually figure out what the screw size is, leave the rubber feet on, remove the screw, and then actually drill it through the board and then have the rubber foot kind of go between the board surface and the pedal itself. And that kind of gives it like a little bit more squishiness and give. Okay, an HX effects. So with an HX effects, yeah, you just remove the feet. You remove the feet and you just put the Velcro directly on it. 
Um, that's how I did it with Rhett's board. That's how I did it with my board. That's how I would do it. Um, Geo. Yeah, my parts are in Long Beach. Yeah, they probably are. Um, what's going on with parts? Just join the stream. Well, there's just a general... Um, I would say we're less affected than, than other people in terms of availability because all of our stuff is analog. But for people that are making digital parts, a lot of the processors and stuff like that are all really backlogged and, and, and in some cases are being like rationed. So maybe a company can only make a limited number every month and so they restrict a company's uh, availability or, or to get any particular part. So they said, let's pretend that you're pedal brand XYZ and you require 10,000 microprocessing chips a month from analog devices. But analog devices now can only make 10,000 a month. So then they're rationing and saying, okay, well, you, you cannot take more than 500 of these parts per month because we need to be able to have enough to go around for everybody. And so what ends up happening is, is companies have already had this big backlog from COVID or for whatever the case may be. Uh, they have the demand, but they just can't get the parts in order to meet the demand because they're kind of being shorted. And this is happening too with our pedal boards. Uh, luckily, um, our partner with the pedal boards, Robert F. Chapman, aka Fix Pedal Boards, um, you know, they're allocating a lot of metal to go to the, the pedal boards, but uh, they're also rationed too. They're only allowed so much, they're only able to buy so much steel, so much aluminum per month. And they're being rationed so that there's going to be a limit to what they're even able to produce because they can only get so much per month and however they allocate it to their vendors is how they allocate it to their vendors. And uh, presumably the, the companies that give them the best margin are probably going to be the ones that, that uh, are the ones that get first priority. So it, it can be a frustrating thing for a lot of people. Luckily, you know, we have good relationships with our vendors and, you know, we, uh, we have great, uh, great relationships and great terms. So we're never in, in a situation where, you know, we have to worry about, uh, you know, our vendors going with somebody else. So it's been, we've been very fortunate in that, but I think everybody's going to have to adjust a little bit. Certainly prices are going way up. I think the cost for the Mark II pedal boards originally, we thought they were going to be roughly the same. And then the price of aluminum went up, you know, 300%. So, I think that the resulting cost difference for the Mark II pedal boards is going to be somewhere around 30% more than the original. And most of that is just not in the price to build it or to assemble it or to, to paint it or any of that stuff. It's really just in the raw material cost, which has just gone up astronomically. Um, and again, a consequence of just the supply and demand. So and for, I'll do my best to hold the prices on everything as much as possible and, and absorb as much as that I can. But there's a certain threshold where, you know, we, we can't lose <laughs> on some of this stuff and we have to increase the price, uh, unfortunately. But I promise I will do my best where I can. Um, do you have a supplier for boards in the UK? I think Anderton's uh, Cycle Q has them. Otherwise, Hard Guitar and Parts has them and Tomon has them. And I know that they'll ship to the UK. Uh, Ryan, have you ever put anything, anything, any light lighting rigs? Have you ever put together any lighting rigs? I just finished putting together my first front of house console. I'm curious if you, I, I've never put together a lighting rig. No, I don't know that I have any good suggestions. Um, and let's see, my uni also can't get microcontrollers now. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, and, and uh, all companies are experiencing supply chain issues and a number of them have shut down due to this. I ordered a new guitar in June and it's not expected to arrive until January. Yeah, I think that a lot of people are just gonna have to be flexible with it, unfortunately. Um, yeah, yeah, Lancaster's hot, I'm sure. Yeah, Lancaster's kind of like, I don't know, probably 60 miles northeast of LA. Um, but uh, man, Robert F. Chapman's great, um, they make, metal for everybody sir bogner um us full tone i mean like everybody um all right you just talked about the pedal board mark twos uh are they out yet or will they look they they will look the same pretty much as the mark ones except they'll be magnetic so there won't be any screws to to pin the the riser the hinged riser down They'll also have options for built-in power modules and buffer modules. Um, they won't have a center leg. 
and the cutouts won't be like this. So like here, for example, right, in order to have a cutout for the, for the volume pedal, it just ends the riser early. On the new version, it'll actually be laser cut, and this will be continuous from side to side so that we can have the AC power module on one side and we can have the buffer module on this side. So that will be the, the key difference. But let's get, into, uh, let's get into some more stuff here in terms of the approach. Now, at this point, before I start getting into putting stuff down, there's a couple of things that, that I always like to do on every pedal. That already has my crew. And these guys already have my crew. Okay, cool. Something I like to do on every pedal. So the first thing I'll do is, I know my pedals, but uh, I don't know if Danny's utilized the battery, but the first thing I do is I take out any batteries that are inside here, because we don't want to have any leakage of the battery. We don't want a battery exploding. We don't want any issue whatsoever. So I'm gonna remove any batteries that might be in here. All right, so no battery in here. Now we use a nice high quality uh, DC jack there, or battery jack there. But one thing that's important to do is we don't ever want anything to short out if you're not using a battery and it's sitting on the pedal board for a long time. So I like to put a little heat shrink over it so it just covers the plus and minus and uh, prevents it from ever having a short against the PCB. Just hit it real quick. Now you could also do this with, with uh, electrical tape if you wanted, but this is just a little cleaner. So I'll just do that with every one of them. And on our pedals, um, we mask, you can see here, we mask off so that we can get ground between the top and the bottom of the case. And the, and the opposite side of this is also all masked off so that we're able to, uh, to get connection between the bottom. A lot of pedal companies do not mask the both sides of the enclosure, so they're actually not getting the full benefits of the shield of both the top and the bottom of the enclosure. So I always make sure, I, I know on our pedals we do it, but not every other brand does it. So usually I'll uh, Dremel out the... Uh, the bottoms of other uh, pedal companies stuff so that it's really fully grounded properly. You're getting the benefits of the bottom also shielding everything. So we want to make sure that we do that in the cases where, where they're not. And I know most of the pedal companies now, so I can usually, I know the ones that already do it where I don't have to open it up or there isn't a battery in it or something like that. So I can kind of skip a few steps in some cases, but uh, I just make sure that we just do it across the board. So we'll like mask off all the little countersinks here or the chamfers and the holes here. So that's exposing the, the metal on this side. And then as the screw comes through on the other side, we're able to, uh, to get through here. So this one also will do a uh, Stretch this guy out slightly. And again, this could also be done with electrical tape if you wanted. It doesn't need to be done with a uh, heat shrink, but it's just a, a good measure. You can see why if you're doing this really properly, it can take a lot more time because you're having to do this across all of your pedals, making sure that they're actually performing optimally.
All right, so here's a good example. So we can see here that the countersinks are not uh, are not Dremel out. So you're going to have a situation here where you have the uh, we're going to take the battery out, but you can see here that the paint is actually exposed inside of where the threading is, but there's just nothing that's connecting this part of the enclosure so that it's actually matching up with the entire shielding of the rest of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this guy with a little heat shrink, and then I'll show you how we resolve the, uh, the issue of the uh, grounding the bottom part of the case. So I'll hit this guy real quick. And then I'll take my Dremel tool. Get my Dremel. And then I'm basically just gonna kind of just turn it and get rid of that paint. So you can kind of see here now that the paint is exposed in that countersink. I'm gonna do the same. So now we can see all four corners are now have the paint removed. So this is gonna allow it to make full contact when it goes through that part of the enclosure. Let's see, where did my tone brush go? There it is. Now when we put them back on, we got a perfectly, got the perfect benefits of the bottom part of the case. We're getting the full benefits of that shield. And you can't even tell that it was ever done. You just do it right there in the, in the, in the, those countersinks. And once the screw is in, you never even know that it was done. No evidence whatsoever that you had ever altered the enclosure at all. So we're all good there. I know this guy's already taken care of. I know this guy's already taken care of. This guy is not. One of them they usually uh, do the grounding on, and then they, and then the other ones they don't. So this one's are actually already grounded because Hammond only 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 does one. But the other ones need to be. there now they're all removed from the paint so I'm getting the full benefits of that shield the bottom of the case don't need to do it there 
I know that this guy is already good. This has a battery compartment, but it's isolated from everything. Equally, this guy is good. And I know this guy is also good, so I don't need to do any of that to any of the other pedals. All right, Corey Dean. Thanks, bud. <laughs> Thanks, Mason, for being the DIY Tone King. Have a cup of coffee on me. Thank you, sir. Happy Halloween. Let's see, we've got some questions in here. Let's see. Heath Band, just getting here. Mark II pedal boards. You say when they're going to drop. We're supposed to ship them on November 1st, which is Monday. What kind of rig are you building? Alan, uh, oh, I think he's asking Ryan. Uh, SD Design, love Tech Talk. You love the heat shrink. So Boss Pedals pretty much could benefit from this exercise. They don't need, the Boss Pedals actually are fine. Um, they're fine. Uh, they're already metal on the bottoms and, you know, the, the rubberized part doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't get into the metal. It's mostly in this kind of style enclosure, like the Hammond style enclosure, where I see it most commonly. There are some other exceptions, but uh, it's super easy to do. It's just, it's just like one extra step. You know, you just have to just get, get rid of that, that extra paint. And it's pretty easy to, to, to deal with it. And, and just adding that heat shrink, just, it's, it's a little overkill. I'm sure there's people that would argue that it's unnecessary, but uh, it's just so easy. You could just do it with electrical tape too. It would have the same, uh, it would have the same issue or it would resolve the same issue just by using electrical tape. So um, pretty easy. I refuse to carry a cell phone or, or to call carry a cell phone. I don't know what that means, to call carry a cell phone. I don't know what that is. Helene at Plains must be a good car dog. <laughs> yeah, first of the month, Dean and the Crows. Yeah, as you, you probably heard Zeke out there. He's a, he's a, a Hungarian Vishla. He, lo he loves to howl at things. He's definitely got a, he's definitely got a, not so much a bark, but a real, a real solid howl. I refuse to call, bring a cell phone on, uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe this RFD. I don't know. I don't know. What's going on with you, RFID? <laughs> Is it possible to make some battle board risers that aren't that high? Uh, maybe you only need to fit a patch bay and a Chox DC7 if possible. Um, you could probably request from Fix to make a... Um, to make a shorter riser potentially like something that's not as high that's definitely possible um we don't offer them and the main reason why is that you can't really fit most conventional pedals underneath when you consider like the height of the knobs and everything like that and once the velcros on them that also raises it up slightly so that's the reason why we have uh three inch clearance um on the front and then three and a half underneath so they can pretty much fit the majority styles of, of pedals. And honestly, I mean, it's not really that high. I mean, if you're looking right now, you know, the, the, the top of the knobs are pretty much right there. I mean, I probably have maybe a quarter inch of clearance on these. Um, on the Wampler, maybe, actually probably about the same because the knobs are a little higher because my knobs are further down. So I have a little, and, and my case is angled. So I have a little bit more knob clearance, but his are actually probably even closer than that. So pretty much just about clears, you know, and if I had these underneath, it would, it would really be the same thing. So I thought long and hard about the, 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 the height of the riser, and this is really, really the way to go. Um, and uh, I'm gonna put that user to timeout. Bam. Um, let's see. <laughs> Halloween's brought out the trolls. We just put them in a timeout. Bad behavior gets a timeout. Um, Ryan Craig Martin. I'm trying to decide on a chorus and a delay uh, for my first pedal board, but I'm overwhelmed by options. Um, all right, so delay. I mean, this Nova is incredible. It's one of my favorite delays of all time, but I'd say my favorite delay... I think I got one over here. Let's see. Let's 
Favorite delay, Boss DD500. This is the best sounding delay. Digital delay out there. Murders, Strymon. Murders. I mean that in the nicest way. And then for chorus, uh, there's a lot of different choices, but for the money, the Jacques Meister Singer. Definitely great. I think these are like 100 bucks. Uh, this is a great analog chorus. Um, the, the Red 7 Little Wave is a great analog chorus, but they're, they're pricey. Um, if you can find an Arion SCH1, they're great. If you can find the ones that I modded, uh, they're kind of pricey too, but those are great. Um, a Boss DC2. Um, or, no, Dimension C. Is it DC? Yeah, DC2. DC2, yeah. Um, the Dimension C is great. Even the Wazacraft one is great. Those are all good. Let's see. MXR analog delay is nice. Bam, Boss DD500. Yeah, this is this is so cool, man. If you want like the vintage rack delay tones, you can do it. E e e EHX Good Vibes, where would you place it in the signal chain? We actually just did a video about Univibe pedals and people got all bent out of shape about the position that we put it in. So I was following the Hendrix way, which which is the, the fuzz is first, then it goes in the Univibe, then it goes into octave, wah, that sort of stuff. Um, but a lot of people were making the case that the better sound is with the vibe first and then going into fuzz and all the other subsequent stuff. Um, so it's really a personal preference thing. The main reason why we had done it in our Univibe video is just because that was the Hendrix signal path and we were talking about Jimi Hendrix, so that seemed to make sense. Um, but there's a lot of people that think that it gets kind of phasey when you use distortion before it or any sort of fuzz or overdrive. So I would recommend trying it both places, but I think early on in the chain is typically good, uh, closer to the guitar. Yeah, and you love the DD2. I, I have a DD2 inside. Those are great too, I love them. And you're welcome, Ryan Craig Martin. Um, if you guys are digging this, give us a thumbs up. Um, I got a couple more minutes and then we have our private stream to follow. If you don't know what the private stream is, we have a private stream for supporting members, for people that are um, that are paying to receive ongoing private Q and A's. We do these every week, pretty much, um, and they do that over on Patreon. So you can join us over on Patreon backslash Rig Doctor, and you can find out about all the different membership options. Patreon won't allow me to make a fully free option. The cheapest option is $1 a month, and you basically get the same privileges as the $5 a month. It's basically like, for the cost of going to a matinee at a movie theater, you can have a year's worth subscription to private content that we do right after this. So go over to Patreon. If you don't know what Patreon is, I promise it's safe. They're not gonna steal your information or anything like that. It is a site where creators will have additional paid content and there's all different sorts of stuff. You can have me design your signal path for you for a, a fee. You can have me uh, make you a custom diagram for a DIY buffered interface that you can't figure out how to wire it properly. I'll send you a wiring diagram. You can do one-on-one -on -one cons consultations. So go check that out. And also remember that we're doing a pedal board giveaway. We're gonna give away a free pedal board, not built, but the pedal board surface. Uh, and you can join up with us over on social media to find out more of the details on that. Um, but if there aren't any last questions, I think we're going to move on to that uh, our private stream for the day and finish up here. We've been going for about an hour. MXR Echo Plex is a good pedal. I recommend that one as well if you want the just a straight Echo Plex. It's probably the best one out there, I would say, for any of the modeling ones. You'd love to mod your DD2 for a bright cut switch or maybe 100%. You can get 100% wet by just plugging in the uh, dry output, just a dummy, a dummy plug. And uh, Ryan, the Patreon is just patreon.com slash rig doctor, just spelled out in full, R-I-G-D-O-C-T-O-R. All right, guys, thanks for joining. Hope you dug it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. That helps a lot. And uh, we'll see you next time.